All right, let's take a look at the first exercise. So it's called verbing your noun. So remember when we wrote the row, row, row your boat in the playground back in a few videos ago? Well, here we're going to redo this, but we're going to change the first line so that uh, we don't have to rewrite each function every time. So the exercise is write a function that returns a sentence like row, row, row your boat when given a verb and a noun. The function should look like this when you call it. All right, so the name of the function then is opening line. And we have verb, which is of type string. And we have noun, which is also of type string. Now it needs to return a value. So we do the hyphen and then the greater than sign. And then we return a string. And then we do the opening brace. All right. So we're going to return a string. And we're going to say, what are we going to say? We're going to say verb plus space plus verb. Oh, wait. Notice here, the sentence, notice it has a, a comma. So let's use a comma in here. So I'm adding a comma. So we're going to say verb, comma, verb, comma, that's the space, so it has some space in it, oops, plus, verb, 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 your boat, okay, verb, plus, And then we say space your, and we can say now. Okay, so if we call that, then we say opening line, we're going to say here's a constant, so we're going to say let line equals opening line. And the string is going to be called type, and then type, whoops, app. OK. Type, type, type your app. Awesome. Now, that's one way to do that, right? Another way you could do that is here we're concatenating, meaning we're adding them, string plus a string plus a string. Or you could have done it a different way. I'm going to comment out this line, and I'm going to press Command and the forward slash. And then I'm going to try this a different way. I want to show you the other way we could do that, which is I could have a string. And then I can use the uh, string interpolation, which replaces the uh, variables or constants. And so we're going to say verb verb and then we're going to say verb your noun okay now notice it returns the same thing here i had one string and i just had i just replaced each of those uh, parameters and then it works so that's the other way you could do that all right let's check out using return values so functions are the building blocks of programs but mostly we've just been dealing with functions one at a time so here we're going to create the results of one to influence the work done by another so here's a method called impossible beliefs count and you've got pigs flying frogs becoming princes multiple lightning strikes. These are unlikely incidents. Then we print the number of impossible things that were believed. And so the total is each one of these added up. All right, update the impossible beliefs count function so that instead of printing the value, it returns it as an int. OK, so to do that, remember, we need to add the text arrow to return. And then the type is int. 
now at this point it's going to ask it's going to throw an error because remember it says hey you're missing the return in the function it's expecting return int so we're going to remove this and we're going to say return total all right so now that resolves just fine next impossible things phrase creates a phrase using string interpolation see here we did that earlier where we replaced these constants with this information now it says update the impossible things phrase function so that instead of using its two internal constants it takes two arguments number of impossible things as an int and meal as a string all right so Notice how it's already typed it down here. I'm just going to copy by pressing Command C. I want to click in here and then press Command V. And then I add a colon. And then it's of type int. And then I add a comma. And then I'm going to take meal and Command C. And then paste it with Command V. And then it is of type string. Now we need to remove this. Okay. Very good. Now we have two functions. Call impossible beliefs count and store the result in a constant. Call impossible things phrase passing in the result of impossible beliefs count as one of the arguments. All right. So let's see. Him Impossible equals impossible beliefs count. So I just arrow, I used the arrow keys to get back to that, and then I pressed return. And now it wants for integers. So pigs flying. Let's see. I've only seen probably three uh, frogs becoming princes. I don't think I've ever seen that. Multiple lightning strikes. Oh, I don't know. Six. So. In total, those are impossible things. Now, the impossible things phrase, passing in the result as one of the arguments. Okay, so the sentence is, we're going to say, let impossible phrase equal impossible things. So I'm going to arrow down and then I press return. And the int is going to be impossible and I'm going to arrow down and it's this int and then the string is going to be uh, before dinner so what does it return it returns why I've believed as many as nine before dinner impossible things awesome all right let's check out argument label so remember, functions and arguments should be named so that they read like a clear instruction when they're called. So we give arguments two names. An argument label is used when calling the function, and a parameter name is used within the function body. So here is our method. Sorry, function. <laughs> here is our function. And it says, add an argument label to the function definition. So it reads like this when you call it let final score equals score with reds greens golds so we're going to say with reds and then a space now we've changed the method now notice down here it says incorrect label argument because i updated it well guess what xcode will fix it for us and there it is, let final score equal score with reds, greens, golds. See how that works? So again, the argument label is this first word within the parameter, and then the parameter name is actually right here. So notice again, with reds is what we see in the function call. So it says with reds. This is called the argument label with reds. Reds 
is actually the argument name, but we don't see the argument name here in this function. But within the function body, which is all of this text here, we see reds, which is the argument name, and that's what gets used. All right, check out no argument label. Some function names are descriptive enough they don't need a label for their argument. To write a function that can be called with an argument only, you use the underscore when you're, where you'd normally specify the argument label. The function below has an unnecessary argument label when you call it. Holler phrase. So here it says holler phrase, holler phrase. All right, let's change that. So the way we do that is we use an underscore and then we have a space. Now notice how because I've changed that we the the function called here now this is incorrect so if I click that it says extraneous argument label phrase so let's delete it check that out and here I'm going to manually delete it. Awesome. See how that works? It says because it has the underscore we don't need the argument label within this function. So when I say holler, we know that this phrase is what gets used as the argument name within the function. Awesome. Very good. Good job. Be sure to subscribe and look for the next video.